Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. What's up, everybody? This is my name, it's Edward Black. Welcome to my review of Let's Make 40 Night 1 right here on the PW Zone. And I gotta say, Night 1 was made Night 1, was made 40, it was decent. I'm not going to sit here and say it was great. I'm not going to sit here and say it was amazing. Um, but I would say that um, it was basically like a roller coaster. It started off great and ended up you know, slowing down a little bit. But it started to pick up once the, the last two matches start, uh, uh, ha happened. Um, but um, going through the matches that I, don't, I really don't, I, that, that we, I didn't care for uh, out of the way. One is the disappointing match of the night. In, uh, in my opinion, um, Jimmy and Jay, brother versus brother, Uso versus Uso. This matchup was just. If you, if you ever, ever imagine a uh, matchup between Nicholas and Matthew Jackson, uh, what would happen if those two face off in a one on one match? That was pretty much what, what it was. Um, they would just throw a super kick at, at the super kick at the super kick. Like, dude. At least with Matt and Nick, when they ever had a one-on-one -on -one match against each other, it would, it would be at least be interesting because they, they know how to do different moves. You see, we've seen Nick and Matt, Matt, Matthew and Nicholas do different moves constantly when it comes down to like tag team matches or like doing like matches in like singles matches. I do think that Nicholas is more a single wrestler than um, Matthew, but that's beside, beside the point. This match between uh, Jay and Jimmy was just. Like, dude, it was just all, all like it was just super kick after super kick, and and JJ almost got almost lost the match because he almost went surrender like an idiot, like a dumb baby face that he, that he is, and he almost lost. Plus, J, Jimmy said all he got to do is some moves that we've never seen before because you know surprised Jimmy with some new moves. It's the same move that he always seen we've seen him doing for years as a tag team as a single competitor. I mean, we've seen more uh, single, uh, single matches from Jay than Jimmy, but you get my drift. And J Jay won the match up, but I'm, I'm actually happy for it. I thought they got to do the whole, like, you know, have Jimmy win and have uh, Jay win at backlash. But I guess they're not going to do that. I hope they don't do that. Because Jay went here, and it basically is, 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 is hopefully it's the end for, for uh, these guys for now. I don't want them to have enough match up that Jimmy wins to get his win back. And. I mean, I, I happy that they won, but this was a waste of time. Speaking of waste of time, what was the point of having a little rain that, uh, there? What was the point? I thought it wasn't a little rain up premiere a, a new song for everybody uh, there to walk have uh, walk uh, Jay, Jay Uso out. But no, he literally the same song that he we we been listening to for over a decade in a milli. Plus, he got cut off, act like he tried act act cool, but. It was just, it was just, it was just pointless. And then he try to add, try to add up, uh, Jay, uh, Jay's theme, uh, during Jay's entrance, like he book a T, like dude, get out of here. Like there was no point in being there in the first place. But I'm glad Jay, Jay, Jay also won. Um, got uh, Jay Cargill, Naomi, and Bianca Belair versus Damn Control. This was sponsored by uh, Wingstop, and Wingstop is a rest is a. A uh, restaurant that sells nothing but uh, chicken wings and ch chicken ring primas, and you you have this match be sponsored by a chicken uh, restaurant where you have three black women in the match. I mean, I, I don't I don't know I don't know if you noticed, but um, does that seem kind of a little, little, little racist to you? Just a little bit, like 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 this like this much like, dude, what the fuck was the, what the point of that match being sponsored by Wingstop? Like the match up wasn't wasn't even that good anyway. It was just a dick match in the contest with with Jay Cargill and, and Bianca Belair. Except they don't they don't have dicks. It's like any anything you can do, I can do better. Kind of match like Adrian Brown said. Um, but it just it was just I hate how they did did that. And make it make it worse. They did it the same. They did a they sponsor uh the sponsor of the Ray Mysterio and Andrade tag team match was. A Mexican, Mexican version, Mexican flavor version of Mini Maid. 
what the hell is what 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 were these sponsorships? And make it even worse, tomorrow night during the, the, no tonight, in the in the street fight, the street fight with the three three pops of Bob Lazar versus Fine Testament, that's sponsored by Gin and Juice. Like the actual Gin and Juice that's made by Dre and Snoop. Like, what the fuck, man? Anyway, before I go off on these stupid, like, like you know, sneaky racist, uh, stereotypical sponsorships, the matchup between uh, Dan Wittro and uh, the, the Big Three, as they were calling themselves, Jay Cole got won by Penn, Dakota Kai, which looked good by the way. I don't, know, I don't know what uh, they were probably talking about. Um, but uh, Brown Weller still undefeated at WrestleMania, while Oscar still winless, and it's just I don't care. I don't care if she got there to get pinned. The fact that he still, he still had not gotten winning WrestleMania is bullshit to me. Um, but uh, this matchup was just it was pointless. Um, but the begin the start of the kickoff match between uh, Becky Lynch and uh, Real Play, it was actually pretty damn good. Um, yeah, it was not it was not as good as uh, a lot of people uh, wanted it to be. I thought it was good enough to, to the point that I say it was it was better than Charlotte and, and Flair, and yeah, I said it was ten times better than Charlotte Flair and uh, we were playing at WrestleMania, no uh, thirty nine last year, and I really thought this matchup was, was a lot better than um, the matchup they, that that really had with Charlotte, um, because the way the way the match was Charlotte was only got good only got good to that, that last ten minutes, ten fifteen minutes, but this matchup between Becky and Will was good from the start to finish. And they had, Becky had a strep throat and uh, while Ray Ripley had a, a, a injury wrist. So like, they they were working with it when they were all messed up. And they still did, did, did their thing. They still looked good in the ring. And like, I I, 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 applaud, I applaud them for going out there and just go doing their, their thing, even though one was sick, one was already injured. So, close to both Becky and and, uh, and Rhea. Um, you got Bray Ripley going coming out going out coming out to uh, most of the, most of the list and White, the same uh, band that sing her uh, theme song for Will. Most of the list and White, pretty damn good band. I I, I I listen to some of their songs. I used one of their songs from my trade review for Pentagon Junior like years ago. And you want you want to check that out? Just search uh, Pentagon Junior uh, tribute, and you, you probably. Uh, Look, look for uh, uh, find out right way, but this matchup was a really good match, and I'm glad that we were playing retain her title because honestly, honestly, she needed to retain her title to make her try to remain at least somewhat credible because her title had not been the best. So, a win here, a win here over Becklands was a what must need win, and I'm glad she won. <clears throat> Speaking of Judgment Day and um, not winning, um. Dominic Mysterio lost, lost his mask, lost his mask against uh, his father when he teamed with uh, Santa the Bar. They lost against Adorade and Will Mysterio. A little, a little help from a couple of football players from uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Um, Lance Johnson and recently retired uh, Eagle Jason Kelsey. It was one more, one more day going to be part of uh, the some kind of mask or some kind of make, make some kind of appearance. And now we know what he did, what he was doing, and he was... Helping out with material as a big old uh, Lucidor. <laughs> but uh, Andrade and Web Steel again win, and Web Steel 2 0 against his son, that was Mayo. <laughs> and we have the ladder match, the six pack ladder match to determine the, new, uh, the unspirited champions, tag champions. Or in this case, the war is match tag champions, because this match up, they officially split the titles. And it was all it, this matchup was all over the place, and I I say I really enjoyed this matchup a lot. Ton of bodies flying all over the place. It was just so many chaos, so much chaos, so much, you know, just bodies everywhere. Tables tables being broken, ladder being broken, literally. Like just a car, just just a just a car that needed to yell at Damian, Damian Priest telling, "Hey, get rid of that ladder because that ladder is literally broken." And Damian Priest telling him to shut the hell up, like. Dude, she's trying to help you out, not, not 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 get hurt, you idiot. Um, at one point you had uh, uh Daniel Gargano, uh doing it, the one doing the one final beat, slinging side DDT to um Pete Dunne do a table on the outside, while Tommaso Ciampa hit uh Air Raid crash to Tyler Bate 
off the ladder. And it was just, it was, and also JD, JD McDumbass died. And he, uh, got thrown off the ladder on a, uh, and landed and do a got put through a table on a, on outside because he tried to help out Finn Balor grab the the, the Walter Hayes house. Um, but long story short, got A Town down under becoming the new SmackDown Tag Champions, and you have the Awesome Truth becoming the new Walter Tag Champions. So the Walter Wall and SmackDown Tag titles officially split. Thank God. Cause I think it was about damn time to have them, these titles split, cause I'm I was I was tired of these uh, titles just being misused on both shows. Having one, having uh one uh both titles being defended on one show, cause you rarely see the undisputed champion, undisputed tag champions being defended on SmackDown. You don't really see rarely see, really see on Wall or on pay reviews. But it was about time. It was about time to have these titles split. I'm surprised that, that that um they actually went with um Austin uh, Austin Theory and, and Grace Waller, especially after I, I again I, I told you on, on in my 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 business video, I thought I really think they gotta give the title give the title to um a town down under because all the talk about Melser saying oh they gotta be removed from the for the for the championship match, well Melser you're wrong, like always, today all your news SmackDown Tag Champions and of course you had Grace Waller doing a suey with his going to sue. So I did pick them to win along either 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 A Town Down or Newcastle Pro Whip and hey, I take I, I, I was not wrong with my resistance in that, in this ma in this match. But I was wrong with my resistance in the next match. Cause let me tell you. I would not I did not see this coming. But I'm not even mad at that at that outcome. Same as Zayn, D Thrones, the Green General O. Walter, yes, Walter, <laughs> they would become the new Intercontinental Champion. And he busted, busted out the Brain Buster. The Brain Buster. Like, dude, we never, yeah, we, I haven't seen that move since, since forever. I mean, he probably did it uh, last year at WrestleMania 39, I didn't even notice. But seeing that, seeing that move be done, done to uh, Walter was insane. Plus he hit uh, a little kick to uh, to the back of Walter to win the match. After Walter was literally squashing it with splash after splash after splash with the top rope, literally uh, talking trash to his wife when I was sitting uh, in, in, in the crowd. But seeing uh, Sami Zayn be the one to dethrone uh, Walter, it was a soccer. I, I, I did not see that coming at all. I really thought they had to have Walter be uh, champion all the way to the point that they like, have Chad Gable be the champion. But I get why they did it. They did. They did uh, go for uh, um, Sami Zayn because Sami Zayn is the more believable person to beat uh, someone like Walter, which I'm not mad at. But I do think uh, Chad Gable should, should get an opportunity to be a single champion because he had to bust his ass to be like one of uh, really good uh, single compare. I guess he does the. Sis and uh, thank you uh, nonsense. I get that. It got over, and it was funny. But um, I do think he should be taking taking himself more seriously. Once the time comes to him, time comes to him uh, to go for a single championship. I think they gotta have same day versus uh, Chad Gable on that on wall because before same day entrance, um, Chad Gable said, "If you win, you owe me." So I mean, you might you might see a pro program um same Zayn and Chad Gable, which I'm not even mad at. So um, same Zayn being the new IC champion and taking down Walter, and and his historic reign as champion is it was that he that he was a memorable uh West May moment we never, we will never forget. <laughs> so I'm not even mad at the outcome. I'm very happy for same Zayn, and I like how his the the his. He would they were falling the same thing same throughout the whole backstage area to the to the to the, the stage because he getting pushed by his wife and his kid getting pushed by Chad Gable also getting pushed by his best friend Kevin Owens and it was it was a cool moment and it, and it was like a good like good emotional moment for Sam Zayn to go out there like having the back of his his wife his ch his kid the person who had been training him to get ready for Walter and Chad Gable. 
and of course his best friend, the same guy who made many of made last year with him, Kevin Owens, to have uh, to have fire him up to encourage him to take that water, and he did. So very happy the same for Sam Zayn. Not mad at not mad at, at, at outcome, and Sam Zayn is new IC champion. Now let's get to the main event on night one, and. I'm not gonna talk about this. I'm not talk about that uh, that much because you already know what happened. Roman Reigns and The Rock taking on Kevin uh, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. They, if Team Cody wins, no bloodline. If Rock and Roman, bloodline rules. And this matchup was insane. And it, it, it was it was it was just like all over the place. Like we thought it'd be in, uh, in, uh, all along, even though the referee. Had no leeway. It was basically, it was basically, he was basically just like had, he got a job, his job was on the line, cause the Rock was really screaming at him, hey, you count, don't count, or you're fired. I'm the, I'm, I'm the Rock. I don't fuck around. You you count, you're fired. So they they he was basically barking orders to the referee, to saying, hey, you make you you make sure we uh do whatever, whatever the fuck you want, while you let Cody Walls and Seth Rollins follow the rules. That basically what they, they, they were going on. And for the most part, it, uh, we all thought that Cody Rose and Seth Rollins were gonna get to get, get the win, but uh, it was just like it was just it was it wasn't meant, meant to be. But it it was it was a lot of moments in the matchup that we thought the, the matchup was gonna be over. Cause at one point you had um, Rock going for a people elbow, but Cody Rose walked out of the way and hit hit the Cody cutter on on the Rock. At one point you had Cody Rose. Get, again, saved by Seth Rollins from Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns accidentally spears the Rock, and the the the, the look on the Rock's face when he got speared, priceless. It was so hilarious how he got how he got speared. He was just like, like, like <laughs> it was so hilarious how he got how his reaction, his, his selling of spear was. It was so hilarious, but um. He got both woman and Rock uh, hit, uh, got hit with double spear, double uh, penalties, but that was enough to take take down um, uh, the bloodline. line. Um, but after Rock, uh, Cody was hit the Cody cut Cody uh, bottom on the Rock. Woman hit the spear through the barricade on to Seth Rollins, and that was all she wrote. It was uh, it was all it was all down him for there for um, Cody Rose as Woman hit the spear. He tags in the walk, walk, signal it would end, put the one, it says, there's no fear of my rules, hit the pubic elbow for the win, and tonight, it's going to be bloodline rules, it means the the story basically over for uh, Cody Rolls, that's what we think, because again, we don't know what's going to happen tonight, but we know that it's going to be some, some sick going to go down in this match. And people are saying that the one one race they got to win this match e easily because it's both like wolves. But let, don't don't be sore about that, because Corey Wolf made might probably have some made some strong phone calls, and he might have some backup tonight. He has one race in the ball line. So that my review of night one. I will be back for night two. My review, my review of night two on Monday, sometime in the afternoon. So. Make sure to like, like the video, subscribe, tap the bell, and get the battle miss any of my videos. Let me know down below what you thought of night one in the comments. And till till Monday night, Monday morning or at Monday afternoon, I'm Michael Davis, Eight of Black. I'm out.